The nice lady is saying recording in progress. You know, it's October 31st. It should have been a creepy voice like Vincent Price. Recording in progress. And welcome to Bodega Nights. Hey, welcome <laughs> out to channel14.com's Bodega Nights. I'm Joe, and the person that's laughing like a maniac over there is Martin. Hey, man, how is, uh, how is the other side of the world? You know, the midnight hours close at hand. And creatures to scroll in search of blood to terrorize your neighborhood. Or something like that. I'm good. Right, right, right. I'm good. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, we can weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. Indeed. We are no strangers to love. You know the rules. And so do I. A full commitment is what I'm thinking of. And we're just we're just gonna be sounding pe- like this is this is gonna come out a couple of days after Halloween, right? So like yeah, it's so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> no, this would have been a perfect trifecta had Miko been here. He has some nice laughs that can make it so scary too. Oh, dude, you but, should but, ask him just uh, to like recovering. send one to me. <laughs> Dude, he's like not feeling well right now. Maybe yeah. Maybe. Like in, the next, in the next in the next couple of days, have him just send over a sound file of his <laughs> laugh, and then I can just put it in, you know, like in the background or something, so that people with like nice spatial audio headphones are gonna feel like, oh shit, he's like right there. <laughs> Speaking of Halloween, I know we talked about this in a very, 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 very old episode of Bodega Nights, or you guys have. Um, oh no! <laughs> like all of our Halloween traditions as kids before, like since we come from a third world country, then again they know what country that is. I don't have to say it. There's always this tradition of us '90s kids. Oh God, I feel dirty saying that. Us <laughs> kids growing up in the '90s uh, right. <laughs> of watching a Saturday night uh, television show called Magandang Gabi Bayan. Yeah, they have like a Halloween, for the Halloween special. special, and man. Even in the 90s, their camera tricks were like so like way above industry standards just to scare the bejeebus out of us every once a year. Yeah, you know, my girlfriend was actually looking for like a copy of the 2021 uh, special, right? But I'm not did, sure if it's out yet. Did they even make one? That's, that's what we were trying to find out. But right? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It, it's amazing, like the things we grow up on and take for granted. What are we talking about? We don't take it for granted. We we take it in terror and we hide <laughs> underneath our blankets every year. But you know what we mean? Kanoli. <laughs> Kabayan. <laughs> we don't take you for granted. We take you in terror. <laughs> Right. But yeah. Uh, like Magandang Gabi Bayan. Sorry, I'm, I'm checking out the the yeah, Phil Star the, the Phil the, Star story. Magandang Gabi Bayan Halloween special streaming free for limited time. When was this mm. article? October 21, 2021. Right. So it should be up on the internet somewhere. Limited time. What the hell? What the hell? Yeah. Anyway. But yeah. Keep it so on there. Yeah. Keep it on. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that at some crazy. point it's going to be like pirated on YouTube or something. I hope so. Dear heroes of YouTube who pirate stuff from TV, please do that. You're yeah. at our beck and call. I mean, do it for your country and your countrymen abroad. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing, right? When it comes to, you know, stuff that's just over, over the air, right? When it comes to programs that are over the air, I, I don't know about like the no i mean like the, the the legality of you know pirating it is 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 very clear but like the morality of it i'm not sure you know yeah because like that's the sort of stuff that you can get for free you know as long sure. as you know if, if you keep the ads in especially like when i was a kid i would think about like torrenting and watching those tv shows like illegally off of the internet and i just like thought to myself why why don't they just fucking release them as torrents and have whatever advertiser pay like a little bit extra to be part of the torrented version i mean like you know (laughs) that that would be fine right (laughs) yep but i don't know i mean anyway now that's that's not taking into consideration all of the stupid contractual bullshit that like 
happens yeah. once things start going international. I'm I'm looking That's at you true. like Disney Plus hot star not coming out in the Philippines yet, probably because of some fucking ABS CBN deal. Yeah, and also geographic exclusivity on shows on certain streaming sites. Hey Netflix, I want my survivor in South America. Don't hog it in North America. Speaking of Survivor, right. are you are you watching season 41? Oh my god, yes. I mean, I love the cast. Like this is not some okay. The, um first and foremost, at first there was some hesitation because of the forced uh diversity initiative, but their cast is so well done. Like I think for the first time, these may or may not be recruited contestants and they actually like Survivor. Yeah. Cuz like you could say like here's this young guy who looks like so buff and so you know young and stuff like the surfer dude. <laughs> That's right? like a philosophy major or something. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then, that, that dude is that yeah. I, I I was born a year after the first Survivor, but I'm a big fan like yeah, right. I've seen all 40 seasons. And if you are, you're going to do an imitation or impersonation of at least two people. And then he did. I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm backing <laughs> off now. Yo, for real. Yo, for real. <laughs> right? Like, I don't know. Like, it, it feels like um, there, there's a lot more, there's a lot more strategic gameplay this time around, right? Like, you know, it yes. feels like the survivor meta, if we can call it like, uh, if, if we use like esports terms, it feels like the survivor meta is sort of, something that's in play you know and it's yeah, very it's, much in play with this season i think what i didn't like was the epi- the last episode because nobody was voted out but at the same time he did say that it's a two-parter thing yeah. because uh by the time we'll be saying this it's not like anyone here watches survivor and listens to bodega night so you wouldn't care me spoiling it <laughs> There's this contestant who's a Canadian, Canadian Filipina, and they made a fi- and they made, they made her flashback. By the way, and, and gan- it's so cool. Like this is a new thing. They made character or contestant flashbacks of their life every episode, not just the first episode. Yeah. So so I guess so that nobody gets like a purple edit, right? Yeah. Oh wow, you know the term. Hey, man. Yes, the purple edit, named after a purple Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> so yes, uh, she now has the power to switch up the immunity. Oh yeah, that example, was that's what I was going to ask. But you just 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 go ahead. For some of my friends, they hated that. But right. going into this, you know, this was going to be a very polarizing season. A very polarizing season in the fact that starting from episode one, uh, Jeff already was trying to shoehorn in his quote unquote wokeness or being. So progressiveness mm. by saying, hey, guys, this is a very, very popular phrase that I say, come on in, guys. And I'm like, no, that's a top five phrase. That's not even the top one phrase that comes into mind. Knowing that this is a new survivor. This <laughs> tribe has here spoken have... is like the number one phrase. <laughs> yeah, right? Right? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> right? Diva. Or, 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 I don't know. Uh, this tribe wins immunity or survivors ready go yeah. come on in guys and this is something where i wish joel was in here for but we didn't have time to even talk about the preview of the cast so whatever hey joel hope you're listening um we should have another survivor special where we talk about like <laughs> the cast and like the big moves the big moves and yes and speak of double you can check all his two episodes on the cast garden now on spotify and on tele14.com ah nice <laughs> and i actually i actually really like his um i actually really like his show with uh his mm. like friend the, the uh glorious sportitos <laughs> not, not, not that one the, the glorious reacts like they, they have this yeah the Marvel i thing. really like really that nice. i really like really that show that. but you yeah. know uh, I was going to ask though. <laughs> I was going to ask, what do you think of like this um, this advantage sort of heavy gameplay? Like, it's it's obvious that this is an experimental season. That's all I can say. But I like how they're pushing the guys who have the hidden immunity idol to say the phrase like, you know, uh, I think that butterflies are dead relatives saying hi. And and it's funny because <laughs> how timely this... for Halloween. <laughs> yes. Or, or or 
I'm so confused right now. I feel like I'm a goat on AstroTurf or I feel like my legs are on bro- are broccoli or like broccoli. And they have to be said at the same challenge to activate the idols. And they have. And yeah. it's funny because uh, this, this guy in the blue tribe, uh, Nasir, is so unintentionally comedy gold. Mm. Like, like, did you watch the episode where they were trying to throw the challenge because they want to vote out the girl who now has the power? Yeah. <laughs> and that's how ironic things are now. She has the power. And they wish they did throw that challenge now after what's going to happen next. Um, it's really like... They were trying to yeah. throw the challenge, Zhao. And the was like, oh, no, we'll win, we'll win. And then the guy was trying to miss it. And then, no, 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 tag me in, tag me in. Okay. And then he wins it for them. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like he's unintentionally does not know what's going on, and he just wins it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's like a like you know having having two votes and all of that. Like, dude, come on, you know, or or um, the 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 danger, like the the penalty of not being <laughs> able to uh, of not being able to cast a vote. Like, come on, dude, this is like the first yeah. time that all of this sort of thing is happening. Yeah, it's it's something unprecedented. That's why I think. Uh, and like the next episode, I think it's going to piss off a lot of people because it's two things. If that lady does not break the hourglass, she is so dumb. She is so dumb. She'll get voted out. Yeah. Right? Don't do that. You you break that glass. No, don't think about, oh, but the, most of the people there are like my friends. You want to vote Sydney out, right? She's on the other side. She's immune now. You can take out that immunity, get that for you and the other people, and then you vote her out. You do that. <laughs> yeah. So you know, th- 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 there there seems to be like a lot of uh, a lot more sort of depth of strategy. Like we're we're very we're very long way from like the infancy of Survivor and like Richard Hatch being in an alliance being the height of like strategic gameplay you know yep or, because the next one in that strategic gameplay was the alphabet strategy so oh dude stupid. i found that so that funny so stupid man. it's so funny oh i don't want to hurt anyone's feelings so i'll start with the alphabet votes jenna that's the one who got out anyway <laughs> idiot yeah. so i don't know man it's 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 become it's become quite interesting, right? Because like right at the beginning, because yes. right at the beginning, I, I remember um, I remember the idea of Survivor being more of a social experiment than it was a uh, uh, a show that was about strategy. Oh, right? Actually, was, it is right. It still is. Remember that island where the three guys met: uh, Xander, JD, and uh, Danny, the three dudes. Yeah, and then they have to pick like. Get the advantage or keep your vote. Yeah. It's funny because people online and myself immediately think, oh, so this is like the game theory thing. And then it goes back to my course, like, oh, like that thing they taught me in my course. And I'm like, hey, yeah, into the course. But oh my God, game theory. Interesting. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> but I, I don't know, man. It's, it's just, uh, it's just like right at the beginning what like 20 years ago at this point oh my god yeah, i feel so old ago, right? like 20 years ago it, it was um it was built more as like a, a social experiment like what happens if we put like a bunch of people on an island will they survive right but then like the way it's evolved it's you know it's it's um i, I think them like saying that okay we're just going to be in fiji right now and like we're not going to be going to different parts of the world or whatever anymore um is sort of a statement of intent that uh, Survivor the show is going to focus more on depth of strategy and gameplay as opposed to, say, like, people being on an island. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's not it's so much... Done already yeah, right? Before, so... I mean, like, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's interesting to see how the show has evolved over 20 years. And, yeah, this is probably the best cast... Right, uh, I think what will what made it a bit sucky for some people is this cast is so amazing, yet we only have twenty six days. 
there's too many advantages that dilutes the awesomeness of the cast. This is a well-built cast. Like even Genie, who I didn't have enough feelings for, kind of I felt bad when she left. And then the guy who looks like Bill Walton, uh, Brad, I felt bad when he left. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So I mean, no, Mr. Charisma. Mr. Charisma. <laughs> Un- ironically, Mr. Charisma. <laughs> so yeah, I- I'm glad you're watching. So you're watching. Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> we should make a Survivor podcast and invite Joel. <laughs> like, hey man, yeah, he let's be like do that. like weekly breakdowns. <laughs> weekly breakdown. But yeah, uh, here's the thing. I don't know when you're gonna release this, but if Erica does not. Hit that hourglass. We will disown her and not have Filipino pride. How dare you, Erica? You not Pinoy anymore. <laughs> oh, man. I, I don't Do know. it for your countrymen. Do it for your country. Do it for your country. <laughs> Nasir would have done it for his country. Do it for ours. <laughs> oh, Nasir does everything. <laughs> Oh, dude, he's unintentionally the funniest guy in the in, in the show now since JD left. He's he's supposed to be like like you know he's supposed to be the most street smart, well made dude, uh, self made, and all of that. But like, it's so weird that that's the that's the edit he ended up getting, right? Like the you know socially unaware guy, yeah, that seems to be winning everything. He's getting the Fabio edit unironically. <laughs> Yeah, which, so, which is kind of weird because that's kind of racist by the editors. Not gonna lie, <laughs> <laughs> that's racist of you guys. I thought you're not gonna be racist anymore. <laughs> Going back, Halloween. <laughs> oh God, Halloween. Uh, so magandang gabi bayan. Uh, what else do I do on Halloween? That's it because I rare, I never went to a Halloween trick or treat since I was three years old. The last time I had a trick or treat was what um i was still in preschool what's the grade before kinder um daycare yeah it was in daycare <laughs> I, I i don't know grade negatives negative one or yeah, something negative one or something because the we're last only Halloween, required to have like kindergarten so yeah you and, know and i think the last time i actually went to this halloween thing as an adult you know the tugs tugs music you know wearing some halloween outfits Dancing to people with their revealing Halloween clothes in a club <laughs> in the gig was like six six or five years ago for the most offbeat reason that the site I was writing for, that site that talks about Metropolitan Manila, was yeah. hosting a Halloween party and the theme was Star Wars. And I said, hey, hey, boss who runs this site, are you coming in? I'm coming in. I brought the lightsaber. The cheap one, the, the the 700 pesos thing, the the plastic one that like you know yeah. extends when you flip it over. Because I I don't I'm not a big Star Wars fan, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway. So I went there and then I invited uh our friend John because there's a plus one and it's free because the site hosts it. So obviously I was getting there thinking, ah, oh, so some of my friends in the same site are here. Wrong, it's just me. Ah, that was effing awkward. <laughs> so it was me, John, random people in Star Wars, and then eventually, for some weird reason, guess who I bumped into? Brixton and his future girlfriend, who was just there hanging out with Brixton. Hey, so it was funny. So eventually, I got to hang out with some of our friends in a in a Halloween thing, and then we went to bar hopping. That's my first time actually bar hopping, and in a Halloween costume. And with a lightsaber toy. It's not as romanticized. It's not as awesome as it's being romanticized in TV, movies, and in my cousin's stories. But then again, I'm the least attractive of my relatives. So I kind of understand what they're talking about. (laughs) (laughs) Halloween. You know, it was was AG, I think, like who has this view of Halloween as being just pretty much an excuse for... uh, for girls to dress slutty in a time that is socially acceptable to do so because they're just in costume, man. Like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's, it happens with all genders. Like, you should see some people. I mean, yeah. I, I mean dude, you, we watch Community, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, this, this, was, uh, this was 
just ten, imagine ten, people, ten years ago. Maybe this is before we started podcasting. I remember AG mentioning this. It's just oh, something yeah. that's it's just something that stuck with me because it was something that I found to be true. Like yeah, um, the 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 number of scantily clad women that you find in in, in like um, Halloween parties is just. At the time, right? It was At just the time because you know because, where because I now was, they weren't scantily clad. Uh, the ones I put it, they're no, just right. okay. Just right no, because right. I think I came in the era where all of them have some themes. Some are Harley Quinns, and then the next year was some of them are it Pennywise, and then the next year they're Casa de Papel, <laughs> and this oh, year they're Squid Game. <laughs> Oh, right? At some point, at some point, um, and this was during. I, I think I joined we in doing. just in time for the themed Halloween popularity costumes, and it was just me wearing a uh, a, a black robe, saying he's de- he's a he's a Sith Lord, and underneath it's a CM Punk T shirt. <laughs> there was a. It, it might have been during um, like a Third World Linux. Uh, off tangent section or something. Um, we might have mentioned AG and I that it's um it is uh themed yes like uh, it, it's something along the lines of um people dressing um in 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 a sort of slutty version of. Uh, whatever like the theme is for the year, whatever the the popular thing is for the year. So it's like we're going to have, um, we're going to have Squid Game, but like this <laughs> slutty, like we're gonna have, you know, um, what are other pop culture milestones? Uh, uh, Casa de Papel. Yeah, we're gonna have Casa year. de, but, but slutty. <laughs> you know? I don't know. Um, I I don't think. I, I think I got lucky, Zhao. I think I got lucky that the scene or the people or the, the I don't know, the kids who were now in that scene that time are not in the same vein as those that maybe AG went to in the mid to late 2000s. Maybe. Or the early, or again, the early 2010s, perhaps, you know, but yeah. Okay, I, I not judging. Yeah, early 2010s. Yeah, not judging. Not judging. Not judging. <laughs> But, but you know, you know, like at one point, yeah, there he might have had a point. Like, dude, how I met your mother. What was the Halloween theme? Looking for the slutty pumpkin. Right? So I don't know. But then um just uh just, I, just so that folks are just so that folks are clear, right? Like um and, and this we're is not agreeing about this whole slutty uh, next used to be slutty either genders for me. Oh no! I, 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 I was I just gonna say, yeah. I, I, was, I was just gonna say that like this is gonna sort of tie into that uh, the observation that I had about my student um, that like this is something that AG said back in the day, and I'm not 100 percent sure if he still agrees with it now. yeah agrees with it now. But like the fact is, it's probably on a podcast somewhere, which is kind of scary to think about <laughs> because podcasts are evergreen. Uh, but for me though, like back to that one, uh, I think the funny part was I was just there hanging out with certain friends. I used to hang out in events that does not involve something that's out of what my wheelhouse is. Because when we hang out, do we go to clubs down? No, we go to internet cafes and play COD. Yeah. That's the first time I went to a, to to clubs with friends dancing randomly to random music that's freaking loud and them drinking alcohol and me just still doing some weird ass, you know, jiving dance moves that does not make Ooh. sense because I don't have any rhythm at all. <laughs> so you actually dance? Hanging out in Krispy Kreme or was that Starbucks? I don't know. But basically it was fun because uh, that's a new experience for me. Partying in Halloween. And no, there was no slutty pumpkin in my story. There was awkwardly dressed people with themed dresses in 2015 or 2016. I think Yung Sikat Dun was Suicide Squad. So there's a lot of Harleys. Were there slutty Harleys? Maybe. maybe Probably. Not. I mean, I, I didn't know. notice it. And I was in the dance floor. Because people need to realize you can't see much of them because it's so freaking dark in a club. <laughs> You know, man, this is this is so weird, right? Like you go to a club and like you're there dancing, but like every time that I have ever been to a club, and maybe this is like 
exactly the wrong thing to do. I'm the dude that hangs out by the bar just looking at people. Were you with friends? Yeah. Where were your friends? Dancing. <laughs> oh, so I'm your friends. Okay. Because <laughs> I don't drink. <laughs> what the hell am I going to do instead? <laughs> what the dance? <laughs> like, all right, now just give me a beer or, you yeah. know, if it's, a, if, if it's a fancier club, a martini, please. Yeah. And like, just like sit by the bar and just like observe people. You know, I, I, I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> like every time I've ever been to a club, that's exactly what I've done, which is like, I, I, I'm no fun at parties. Pretty much. Oh my god! Oh my god! Wait, I did go to another Halloween party before that. I was salary man with boxing gloves, unprepared costume guy, basically. And and now it made sense, Jiao. The darkness thing, and then the bar thing, right? Yeah. Imagine you can't see the full face of the one you're dancing with if they really look pretty or not. It happens. Like wow, Wanganda! Like oh my god, this. Chick is so hot, or oh my god, this guy's so hot, good looking, right? Because you're under the dark lights and you guys are dancing and stuff, and then the strobe lights it. Oh, so that's how you look like in real life, in real light. Ah, okay, okay, <laughs> no wonder. And yeah, yeah, there were some scantily clad, uh, you know, costumes in that one compared to the one I was with with John and Bricks and. His current girlfriend, Ellie. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, I, I I don't know. Either way, point is what AG said then might not necessarily be what AG said now, which was agreed. Pretty, which is pretty agreed. funny, man. It was like a couple of days ago, a okay. student of mine, like um, just 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 in the chat, was like, "Sir, I was listening to one of your old podcasts." It was like, "Oh, cool," and she was like, "And that thing you said about Nicholas Sparks." Was like, I was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> Nicholas Sparks. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, who's Nicholas Sparks? Uh, author. Works author. such as what? Uh, really cheesy shit like um, The Notebook. The Notebook. Oh my God. That's him? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and, 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 okay, what other? And, and, and this, um, and, and this, uh, and, and this student was like a really big fan of Nicholas Sparks. Like, she has like a number of his novels and stuff. I'm like, okay. Okay, cool. Uh, and and uh, there, there was a time, there was a time that I wasn't uh, very into Nicholas Sparks, shall we say. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, yeah, this is, um, this is probably actively bad for literature. But, you know, eventually it's like, no, <laughs> that, that, that's not true. It's not necessarily like, not necessarily my cup of tea, but... You know, I, I can I can see why somebody like Nicholas Sparks would exist, and um, can you know more people writing can only be a net positive for the world, even though it's not necessarily my thing. And it was really funny that um, I was being held to something to something that I didn't agree ago. with. You know, from years ago, and it was like, all right, let, let this be a let this be a teachable moment, right? So, mm-hmm. So here's what uh, here's what I noticed about social media, right? <laughs> Unlike uh, media literacy, right? Media literacy. Yeah, unlike the real literacy. world, or, or uh, unlike the physical world, that which we see on social media doesn't go through any sort of physical decay. So, yes. what you a uh, picture that you see from five years ago in you know, or a picture that you see from like five ten years ago in sort of physical space is faded it um it it shows its age and we can sort of contextualize it in our heads in that way but when you have something on social media there are a lot less of those sort of visual or auditory cues that tell us that yo this is something that was in the past and as such it feels a lot more present like social media as fast as it is Right, a lot of people keep on talking about how social media is so fast and it's 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 fucking up like our relationship with the present and whatnot. Something else that social media is fucking up is our relationship with the past. Right? Not you oh, know, yeah. not like twenty years ago past, but you know, maybe ten like ten 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 years ago like past. Most, right, uh, like the the the, the ten fifteen years ago past um, by you know non social media non internet standards um, is something that is not as relevant to the now as that stuff that happens now you know a lot of um a lot of mo- uh, actions in, in in law expire after like 
15 years, or right? Like years. 10, 15, maybe 20 years, you know, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the statute what, of limitation. The, yeah, there, statute right? of your, limitations. Your, your, your statutes of limitations or um, prescription, yes. they, they, they expire after that time. But like, you know, something from 10, 15 years ago on social media still feels present um, still feels as though it is in the present. Which so, is ironic, Jao. You know why? I mean, why? <laughs> um, okay, because you posted it 10 years ago. You tweeted it 10 years ago. There's a date and timestamp on that. Yet, it feels like it was said yesterday. Yeah. You hold that person accountable. It's ironic because it has that age there. Oh, he said that 10 years ago. But I hate that. And he's a director of Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh my God, he's so canceled. Yeah, I mean, there, there, there are some That's things. Funny. Like I, I would say that there are some things that uh, accountable is such a weird word, you know? Yeah. Like when it comes to uh, when it comes to um, accountability, there are certain things that I think sh- you know people should be held sort of accountable for. Say, yeah. for example, if you molested a child. 20 years ago shit you should be held accountable for that um yeah. if you Regardless didn't of the r&b you did yeah right? like oh my god <laughs> this is the plug you saw the Our netflix Kelly documentary, documentary right? <laughs> <laughs> um, t- tying it all together um, but like uh you know it's especially if um especially if the person didn't do any time for it right like yeah. we we uh um, we know people uh, that deservedly got cancelled, shall we say, right? Because of shit that they did a long time ago and were not held accountable for. And I, right? Yeah. right? Like, like you know, I, I have since like disassociated myself with, um, with them. But, you know, you know what I mean? There are some things that people should be held accountable for. But, you know, stuff that... Um, that indicate your beliefs in the past are not necessarily your beliefs now. Right now, yeah. Well, um, so once again, you're. So, so I think the line is um, the line should be drawn at action and not words, right? Like, um, or even even belief, right? Um, it, it should be it should be uh, the the line should be on action versus sort of words or belief because. People's minds change. That is an absolute fact of life. However, um, the internet has this way of storing. Um, yeah. Dude, the internet does not forget, right? And 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 this way of making the making the past perpetually present, um, which is dangerous. I would think yes. it's 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 rather dangerous, um, and it. It 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 gives us a very distorted view of um, time. Actually, you know, it gives us a tremendously distorted view of time, where something ten years ago is seen as present, whereas something that is twenty years old is fucking ancient history. <laughs> it is. Um, speaking of which, like you remember the Nicholas Sparks thing. So before we end on that note, do you still share that same sentiment? About well, this author, Joe. Uh, well, I, I you mentioned it already. Like, yeah, I mean, like I don't you, quite, you know, it's Nicholas Sparks is not my cup of tea. I couldn't get through the notebook. Sorry. Um, however, but I do. Understand. Yeah, I, I do see why Nicholas Sparks needs to exist. Right, it's the sort of it, it 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 can serve as a good like sort of gateway drug, perhaps. Like his work can serve as a gateway drug. Um, there are some people that need the catharsis of a Nicholas Sparks sort of novel. Um, you know, this is. This is not something that um, I and my arrogance should say that nobody should be exposed to, right? right? Like, yeah, this is this is sort of my, you know, the 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 evolution of my sort of thought, right? Like, man, say whatever the fuck you want, do whatever the fuck you want, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to stop free you. World, yeah, well, like I'm, I'm not, not going to stop world, you, but. You know what we mean. It's a free world of ideas. It's like me. I'm not a big fan of this popular sitcom that involves a big bang. I really tried my best to watch the first few episodes when our common friends said, oh, this is so awesome. It's so funny. Bazinga. But what now? (laughs) But but Mazinga? Mazinga, I I don't know. 
so I, I didn't say, oh God, this this show sucks. You can't get into it. No, it 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 serves popular. It's as popular as certain things that are popular in Netflix now, like the Squid Game or or uh or yeah, uh House of Cards or whatever. Mm-hmm. Is that is that the real term? Because since I'm in South America, we call it Casa de Papel for some weird reason or another. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so that too. And uh, like Zhao, I had a similar, uh, I don't know, realization recently. Because um, in anime, like I watch anime that I like that involves kicking butt and taking names like Dragon Ball Z or, mm-hmm. uh, or what's that? Akara Transformers are basically the Transformers G1 that was continued from the the Hasbro American version or other anime like Ghost Fighter and Slam Dunk. But never in my wildest dreams would I get behind a slice of life anime. And here I am a day after binge watching certain slice of life anime. Because I thought, yeah, this ain't for me. And I'm like, wow, this is so wholesome and so funny. And I know this is like a teenage life I never had because A, I doubt the other gender or the other sex would, you know, hang out with me before or after class anyway. Mm -hmm. And B, I studied in Metro Manila. So obviously I either commute or get dropped off in my school instead of walking towards school because I'm not rich enough to live in a very exclusive Makati village just to walk from house to school. So yeah, I changed my views on that too. But wow, I agree. It's, it changes through time. I guess this is something I wouldn't get behind five years ago, but here I am now amazed at this kind of story. Like, oh, how innocent and pure this relationship is between character A and character B. And these for, funny for... side characters. And uh, that's two animes, by the way. For the record, I still don't like the Big Bang Theory. Me too. I'm <laughs> sorry. I mean, the only reason why I tried to watch it was because of the guy who's uh, playing as Howard Wolowitz, because I'm a fan of Simon Helberg in Mad TV. I'm like, oh, he's kind of okay here, but the rest of the cast, it's yeah. like, yeah, I tried to support Simon, but you know what? Whatever. <laughs> I tried, Simon. I tried. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's uh, no, it, it, it's um, it, it feels very pandery. That's that, that's that, that, yes. that, was, that was my problem with it. It was just it was yes. just it, it was just pandery, and it was a uh, reference over story. So I mean, it's like okay, um, but, but again, you know, I, I can see why people liked it, right? I mean, it's I it's, know I, I can see why our friends like it. It's not like we're taking away their geek card because that, that because for some reason or another, this is just my opinion. Maybe Zhao shares this. It panders to these surface level geeks who try to make themselves feel like, oh, look, I'm a geek because I like Big Bang Theory. I relate to them. To an extent, I could relate to them, but I'm not super smart and I do not study in MIT and I do not have a high graded intellect. So I doubt some of my friends are too. Yeah. And you're not as socially inept as these four guys. Yeah, man. It was, it was, it was weird, man. It was- We're sorry again for saying this, but this is just our opinion. We are yeah. not stopping you from watching it where it's available. Like, uh, what's this thing called? Paramount Plus? Or, or net, is it on Netflix? I, I, it's for you, Simon. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know where to watch <laughs> the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get so much bad DMs on Anyway. <laughs> but yeah. Like, I, I just didn't. I, I just, I, I still don't, you know. I, I still don't like the Big Bang Theory. And I don't think it aged... I think, like, sort of internet consensus is that it didn't age very well. So, oh wow! So it's uh, it's as bad as. Speaking of things that a- didn't age well a bit, uh, some of my friends have rewatched How I Met Your Mother, and they just realized, and I just realized through their views, like, oh wow! If you thought that guy from Five Hundred Days of Summer was bad, Ted Mosby is ten times worse. <laughs> That's why my favorite. Now I realize why my favorite character there is Marshall and Lily. <laughs> Man, they were, they were the, the least only, bad persons there. Yeah, they were the and only Lily's ones so that manipulative pretty too normal, and evil. Right? Huh? They were the only yeah, Marshall, ones that were like normal. <laughs> yeah. And, and Marshall's like the purest of pure boys. <laughs> Do but, I like the guy? <laughs> I don't know. But, but I'm, I'm pretty sure like those 80s sitcoms that we sort of grew up watching, I'm pretty sure a bunch of them didn't age well either. 
you yeah, know, mis- dude, Mr. Belvedere, what does it talk about? Think <sighs> about it. Yeah. Like how it, it's basically like Alfred in Batman, but in a worse situation because you're butlering for Bob Euchre and family, not Bruce Wayne. Um, and there was uh, like, I'm, I'm, I haven't Cheers? seen it in like a long time. Uh, Cheers. Well, I'm sure Cheers is like, I think it kind of aged well. Yeah. Until you go to the Rebecca angle, because I think right now uh, certain people of our generation would love a Diane because that's the intellectual thinking independent person, or they would like the wife of Fraser Lilith. Yeah. But I really yeah. like, I really like Diane like of the, Did? yeah, I prefer Diane to uh, Rebecca. I didn't like either, but my God, you know that that Tumblr chick that wants to be very, uh, very intellectual and post some posts, but you know they're not. I feel like that's Diane sometimes. And then when she went to Fraser, when she cameoed in Fraser, dear God, what play did she write? What I mean, yeah, that was that write? was like tremendously. It's so. so it's so, just, it's tremendously it's just <laughs> think about it. Think about it, Chow. It just doubled down on what I thought about her own cheers. She's so self-centered and self-absorbed, regardless if she's a, a, a woman or a man. Yeah, it, that was that was that was why I think it was so cool. Like she was a really good, um, she was a really good foil to uh, Ted Danson's character. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That, that's that's why that's I really like the Sam and Diane because, sort of dynamic because uh, because compared to Rebecca, it's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like in no, no, in 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 Filipino, um, Diane, she si Diane, hindi siya kinain ng buhay. Oh, uh, diba? she wasn't she wasn't eaten alive by um by 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 Sam Malone. Um, I, I keep calling him Ted Danson. Sorry. <laughs> well, because we know Mr. Danza, and he's not known as just Sam Malone, but I yeah. know him as Sam Malone for years. <laughs> yeah, and and I think uh. Woody would become the prototype sad boy for people here now because he's super nice. But even I think now I'd still love to watch Woody Boyd. Yeah. Right? No, he's so of... amazing there. And I can't believe this is a young Woody Harrelson. And oh my God. You, you guys think, oh, wow, this dude has range. Dude, check out Cheers. He <laughs> already had range. He already had. Yeah. It's been there from the start, guys. Yeah, it's like you see him in um, you see him in Cheers, and then you see him in. Uh, now you see me now. You don't. Yeah, and you see him in Hunger Games. Like that's just so oh totally God, different. Right? And um, what was it? What was the name of that? Oh God, that, that TV show. Uh, yeah. Gosh, I can't. I, I cannot remember. Um, ew, that, that, that police procedural. Let me just look at NYPD up. Blue. True Detective. Dude, you see him on yeah. True Detective. Amazing. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and it's so different, right? From innocent Woody Boyd country hick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, or white know. man can't jump Woody Harrelson. Yeah. Duh. Duh. <laughs> he's, he's one of my favorite actors, right? Like, you yeah. know, for, for, for the, the sheer, like, filmography and, it's like, so how very... <laughs> And he he does it all while still being Woody Harrelson. Yes. It's so weird. <laughs> it's so weird. Like the only other person I can think of, the only two other people I can think of that are sort of like that are Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter. <laughs> and people revere them. Yeah. And, and it's so criminally, you know, it sucks that. You don't say that for Woody Harrelson when you see where he started and where he is now. Yeah, so he was know. there. It's like he wasn't the Michael J. Fox of that sitcom. He was a known actor entering a very star-studded cast of what? Ted Danza, Shelley Long, the guy who plays Norm, right? Yeah, like and um, the Pixar guy. <laughs> the Pixar guy. God, what, what and and Fraser, freaking Fraser, man, freaking Fraser is there. That was yeah, he's that not was even top cast. five. He's he was bottom tier at best, and then he made himself like you know to to that. <laughs> so yeah, I think he aged well. Uh, Woody Boyd, Woody Boyd aged well for me. Man, um, it, what I find so cool about 
like by my, my one of my favorite little tidbits to talk about like when talking about cheers is um John Ratzenberger. Uh the, oh. the, <laughs> no, John, John Ratzenberger is Wait, no, the, no, 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 the, other one. the the, the Cliff, Cliff, yeah, hey, Cliff, yeah, Cliff Cliff Yeah, um, hey. Cliff Clavin. Um you he he has a beard in every single Pixar movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like every single Pixar movie has a uh, John Ratzenberger cameo, <laughs> which is just uh, one of the most amazing things ever. But I, 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 I digress I again, you know. But, but yeah, Cheers would have aged well, especially some characters. Well, other characters, uh, not so much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Obviously, the womanizing thing is not popular anymore because of today's standards. It's uh, not, you know. Another show that I really liked um, was Mash. Oh, like, I didn't get to watch that. You should but totally really watch you should watch that. Um, what, what was it? I think part of going back to Big Bang Theory. Part of why I didn't like Big Bang Theory so much was um, I had just finished binging Cheers back in like 2008 or 2009, basically when we were yeah. in college. Right? Like yeah, when we were in college. Uh, that's where Big Bang started in Jack TV as well. Right, so maybe yeah, around 2009, 2010. Um, what was it like? I, I was uh, I was going on this sort of sitcom binge, and um, I had just gone through the whole Cheers, um, and then I was like, all right, cool. What am I going to watch next? Uh, I had a copy of like the first season of The Big Bang Theory, so you know I checked out the first couple of episodes. I'm like, uh, okay, and then I watched um, the first couple of episodes of Mash. And I was like, oh, shit, I know exactly what I'm going to be watching. <laughs> Mash. <laughs> right? Wait. Like, oh, my God. You were in a sitcom binge. Did you try Happy Days yet? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but that, you know. Um, what else did I watch then? Shit. Uh, uh, Charles in Charge, The Facts of Life. Charles. Uh, <laughs> like, um, what were the other shows that I, that I watched? Then. Did you watch the spinoff of Cheers, Wings? No, no. I, I, I didn't try that, too. Um, well, obviously, I watched a bit of Fraser. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I watched a couple of episodes of Small Wonder, but I'm like, oh, man, I, I, I don't like this as much as I used to like it when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, because when we were a kid, we were saying, oh, my God, I would love to have a sister that's like a robot. Yeah. But now that we're teenagers, I'm like, Wow, that would be scary, and she would have choked me to death. Maybe. Yeah, like if if, if my little brother were a robot, holy shit, I know I'd be dead right now. Like, and, <laughs> and Zhao, like in between Small Wonder and rewatching it in the late two thousands. Remember, in the early two thousands, we just watched this Haley Joel Osment movie called AI. Yeah, yeah. So we know where that would have gone into a dystopian world where all of the people are actually now robots and sentient. You know, I actually like that movie. AI. I know it's a it's a very amazing movie. Like, but it's when you watch it as a fairly, kid, that was yeah. scary AF. <laughs> like, I think that film is fairly underrated. Yeah, AI. it's pretty nice. Uh, Jude Law was great there. Yeah, and I, I don't know. like between um between because th- there were two films that came out at around that time, right? Like. AI, AI. Um, which was Spielberg uh, with Haley Joel Osment and uh, Jude Law. And then um, the other one uh, with Robin Williams, uh, Ooh, directed by uh, Chris, Man Chris Columbus. Something? Bicentennial Man. Yeah, Bicentennial Man. I like, watched both of them. Um, yeah. I, I kind of felt warm and fuzzy inside with the Robin Williams movie. But goddamn AI felt so depressed after watching it. But it's still nice. But it's just depressing after we see the ending. I'm sorry. It's yeah, so sad. But, you know, um, another. Oh, dude, something we have to talk about, right? Um, and I, I would love to talk about this on Third World Linux with AG at some point. Fucking Facebook, man. And their whole metaverse thing. It's now called Meta. Um, As a Persona 5 fan, I love that we can call it the Metaverse. So we'll have the Meta <laughs> Nav soon. <laughs> How are you going to order pizza in the Metaverse? Right? Like, <laughs> really, really like awkward, really awkward tweets from um, from the, the, the Twitter account formerly known as Facebook. Um, but something that like my girlfriend pointed out, uh, and I think this was also something that um, was pointed out on one of those like tech 
YouTube podcasts or whatever. Yeah. And fucking, it's starting to feel like Black Mirror. This is really Black Mirror. It's like Black Mirror becoming real. All of the, all of the stuff that you know those weird British people were warning us about. It's 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 kind of coming true, kind of coming true. Like watching their tech demo or watching their little trailer or whatever of you being able to like play tennis and the person that you're playing tennis with is not some avatar, but like you know the idea is that's going to be a mm. sort of digital representation of the person that you're playing tennis with that's sort of like that 30 million credits one where you're on a bike or that one with anthony mackie you know like dude this is black mirror it's kind of scary oh black mirror i didn't watch that i heard it's good it's really good (laughs) but yeah man (laughs) if you end up watching black mirror you'll see where this is coming from right like facebook and them doing their whole metaverse thing is black mirror (laughs) Oh god, it's gonna be I think scary though. Yeah, dude. It it's 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 sort of um it's really interesting because it's it's a fairly depressing meditations on technology and our relationship with it. So you know. <sighs> so speaking of Facebook and something about metas, I gave Jawa a link of a certain meta. Hey, the deadly boys. <laughs> they grabbed the wrong table though, Jao. They grabbed the periodic table. (laughs) Speaking of grabbing stuff, like, have you grabbed a goat head yet? 